So there comes a point in every gearhead, every car guy, every man's life where they're faced with a big dilemma. And that dilemma is to LS swap or not to LS swap. Now there's a lot of debate and questions surrounding this topic. As you can see, we around here kinda kinda like our LS swaps. This is a 5.3 iron block in my FCRX7. This is my roommate Ben's LS Miata with an LS1 in it. I also have an LS Miata with a 5.3 aluminum block in it. Uh, so more often than not, we decide <laughs> to do the LS swap. With that comes a lot of questions. So a lot of people think that doing an LS in a Miata is gonna ruin the Miata. It's a nice, lightweight, nimble, well-balanced car. You're gonna stuff this heavy V8 in the front. It's gonna ruin the handling. It's gonna be horrible. But I don't think it's as far off and as much heavier as people might think, especially with an aluminum block. So then the question is, do you pony up the money for an aluminum block or do you just get a cheap iron block? What's the weight difference? And it's hard to find conclusive information on what is the weight difference from an iron block to an aluminum block. And then what is the weight difference from a Miata motor to a LS engine and how does that affect everything? So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna weigh a 5.3 aluminum block versus a 5.3 iron block. We're also gonna weigh a Miata 1.8 iron block, so it's a four cylinder, but it's an iron block. I'm curious how close the weight of a four cylinder iron block is gonna to be to an aluminum eight cylinder block. We've also got a complete 5.7 iron block engine. Yes, it is a 5.7, it was bored out. And a complete Miata engine. We're gonna weigh those two, and then with the information of the difference in weight from the iron block to the aluminum block, we'll be able to figure out what that engine would weigh if it was an aluminum block, and how that would compare to the iron block four cylinder complete engine. On top of all of the engine weighing that we're gonna be doing, we've already weighed this RX-7, so we know what it weighs, it's 2750. We can subtract the aluminum block difference and figure out what it would weigh with an aluminum block. We're also gonna weigh my LS Miata, which I have not weighed since it's been LS swapped. I weighed it before it was LS swapped, when it was a 1.8 turbo car running and driving. Have not weighed it after. So we'll be able to see what the change in the front to rear balance was and overall weight. Going from a 1.8 turbo, five speed setup to a 5.3 aluminum block with a CD09 350Z transmission. We're also gonna compare the weight of it to Ben's 1.6 turbo Miata. So this is an interesting one because it is caged like my LS Miata is, but it is fully gutted, the back's cut out and and tubed and stuff. We'll, we'll show them more when we when we weigh it, weigh it. But we'll compare the weight to that, and we have a stock Miata and a Miata that we can weigh. So we'll be able to see the difference between the LS Miata, super gutted, stripped race car, 1.6 turbo Miata, and just a bone stock, everyday driver, full interior, AC, yada yada. Miata. So all of that is what we're doing today. I know not all of you are here to see all of that. You may only be interested in one of the things that we're gonna be comparing. So what I'm gonna do is put timestamps in the description for each different test and comparison. So you can just click the timestamp, see exactly what you want. Let's get right into it. First thing we're gonna do with a 5.3 iron block versus the 5.3 aluminum block, see what the difference is. Let's get the scales out and find out. All right, so as you can see, we've got our weights zeroed. We're using the left rear and the right front. That way we can see the cross and then we can switch to front and rear and see the percentage change as well. So that'll make it easier to do our math. I was almost dead on. So the iron block is 203 pounds. That's our right front. Left rear, aluminum block, 101. So it's a 100 pound weight. I mean, it's literally, the iron block is double the weight of the aluminum block. Because again, we're weighing the bare blocks, no main caps, because the main caps are gonna be iron no matter what. Literally seeing purely the difference in bare block versus bare block. 102 pounds, that is wild. Definitely about what I expected. You commonly see 80 pounds. Um, I've heard as much as 120 pounds, right at 100 pounds, between a 5.3 and a 5.3. So now let's compare the aluminum block 5.3 versus the iron block four cylinder. All right, we're back to zero. I don't know if you guys probably can't see that. All right, front, zero. I think this one's definitely gonna be wider. Yep. So the iron block, four cylinder Miata motor, 69 pounds, compared to the 101 
of the LS aluminum block. But I mean, think about that. That's kind of crazy. There's a 30 pound difference between this four cylinder and this V8, as opposed to the 100 pound difference between the aluminum and the iron block engines. So that is kind of an interesting thing to think about. Bare block for bare block. We even took the main caps off this engine just to eliminate them as a factor, try to keep things as even as possible. Bare block to bare block, 30 pounds difference. Okay, now we gotta break out the engine hoist so we can compare 1.8 Miata motor to 5.7 iron block. zeroed. All right, we're going to use these pieces of wood, so I'm going to put them on and we'll just subtract the difference. One pound. All right, so we have complete 1.8 Miata motor long block. So, I mean, this is everything but accessories. You know, no intake manifold, no exhaust manifold, no alternator, none of that stuff. We do have a crank pulley on it. Same with this engine. So, none of that other stuff, but it is, you know, a full long block with a crank pulley, valve covers, everything. So, very good, pretty even comparison. Remember, this is an iron block, 5.7 liter. 406 pounds for the iron 5.7, 221 pounds for the 1.8 Miata motor. Now, if you think about it, if we were to subtract the 100 pounds weight difference from the aluminum to the iron block, and this were to be 306 pounds, we'd be just over 80 pounds heavier. So 80 pounds difference from a 1.8 four cylinder to a 5.7 liter V8 with an aluminum block. So that's pretty impressive. That's not, that's not quite as drastic as I thought it might be. 80 pounds. You know, I'm just curious, like we got to do it with a dressed Miata engine and a dressed LS1. But you know, when you think about it, there's so many factors. There's so many variables. You could run a million different intake manifolds, a million different exhausts. You know, you could run no accessories in methanol. So I think it's an interesting comparison to do bare block, bare block, or, you know, long block versus long block because then we see the true weight of each engine individually, not taking into account all the variables of different accessories you could be running. Okay, Ben's got an intake manifold. I'll grab an LS1 intake manifold. So bare intake versus bare intake. So now we've got 414 versus 236. So the LS intake was lighter. Um, that would bring the weight difference down to right at 80 pounds. All right, so now with all of our engine weights, we'd start weighing cars. So we're gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna bring the stock car in first. So that'll be our baseline, a bone stock NA Miata, then we'll weigh the turbo car and then we'll weigh my LS Miata and be able to compare those. I'm real excited to see what the LS Miata weighs and how it compares to what it was before with the 1.8 turbo setup, his car and a stock one. So let's get this thing out of the shop. So this is our stock Miata baseline. It's got some race stickers. So, you know, those probably add a few ounces. So keep that in mind. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, Spin just tossed the seat in here cause it was missing the driver's seat. Um, but we got center console, tombstone, everything in here. AC works, all of that. It's a, uh, is this a 1.6? One 1.6. Six. One six. Yeah, one six car. So this is gonna be the lighter of the NA Miatas. Again, bone stock car, one six car. Let's lift it up, find out how much it weighs. But well, yeah, what's your guess, Ben? It's probably like 2150. Okay, I'm gonna go 22. That might be a little high. Uh, I've never weighed one. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, zeroed. Oh, right in the middle of our two guesses, basically. 2170. Yeah, right at 2170. What's the balance? Cross is 52 left to right. 53.6 front, 46.3 rear. That's actually a higher front to rear bias than I expected. How much changes with the Oh, with you in it? <laughs> Our left to right is almost dead even before, so just over 50, just... Yeah, now we're, when you put a person in it, the front to rear bias gets a lot closer. 51.7 to 48.2. The left to right did change by 2%, so it was 1% split. It was heavier on the left than the right. Now it is 3% heavier on the left than the right. So that's our baseline, basically a bone stock Miata. It's definitely gonna be one of the wider ones you could get when you get into the, the later NAs and the NBs and stuff. They're gonna get a good bit heavier than this. So this is definitely on the lighter end of the NAs. So now that we've weighed that, let's weigh the uh, turbo one, see what it weighs. All right, so this is a 1.6 turbo drift car. So it's incredibly gutted. Shell of a dash, nothing back there. No stock wiring, just rewired with the bare essentials. You can see it's got a cage. The doors are completely cut out aside from the crash bar, but there's no glass, no, not even it, the uh, A-pillar deals here. Little windows back here is all cut out and boxed in. So, I mean, that probably evens itself out, um, but you know, it's all cut out all through there and then a bash bar and a crossbar here. And then the engine bay. It's a simple 1.6 turbo setup, coil packs, little turbo, aluminum radiator with no cap. Well, that was when it was freezing and everyone was freaking <laughs> out. Uh, so yeah, very basic in here. No power steering, pump or lines or anything like that. Very, very basic coolant reroute catch can. Uh, I mean, pretty much about as simple as it's gonna get. So uh, I'm gonna say <sighs> with the cage. Like 21. I'm, uh, okay, I'm gonna say 20, ooh. I'm gonna say 2050. Okay. I kinda wanna change it, but I already said it and you're at 21, so. 2050. Yes. Yeah, kinda. Good. Yep. Pull out the extra bag. So one six turbo me on a drift car. Coming to you. We're zeroed. Dang. We're completely off. Dang! 1976. 1,976 pounds. So let's see. Uh, our cross is 49.5%. That's left to right, so pretty, pretty even left to right. And then front to rear though. Wow. 54.7 front, 45.2 rear. So gutting it, especially I'm assuming cutting out the trunk and stuff. And then the turbo. It's and then adding the, the turbo weight and stuff. And I, I mean, who knows how much gas is in here? Probably not a lot. Um, probably like more than half a tank. Yeah? Because it drove just one day OSW. And it'll go a three day on one tank. Okay. So call it half a tank. 54.7 front, 45.2 rear. Basically almost dead even left to right though. So that's kind of interesting. I'd be curious if my LS Miata has a better front to rear bias. Possibly, because you have so much weight in the back. Yeah, yeah, I'm real curious. So that's what we're gonna weigh next. All right, so let's get this thing out of here, get the LS Miata in here, figure out what it weighs. Okay, I changed my mind. We are gonna weigh the FC again. Reason being, um, it had more spare parts in it than I realized. I did leave the sway bars in it, because I don't have them on, but uh, ideally they're gonna go on the car, so they'll be part of it. Uh, but now it's just, it's just got what it needs in here. Um, and then on top of the spare parts that we needed to take out, there was some stuff we added since the last time I weighed it. 
which is only a few days ago, but we've been hammering out projects on this thing. Um, but like this electric Volvo power steering pump and the lines for that, and I think, I don't know if the intake was on. So anyway, I wanna weigh it as it is, as a running, driving, working vehicle. The reason I'm so interested in the weight of this one is because I think the LS Miata might be a little heavier than people realize. And basically, if the LS Miata is within 100 pounds of a stripped FC, which would kind of be the equivalent of an S chassis, it changes the dynamic a little bit because the Miata, you're really limited to a 225 wide tire unless you run 17s, which don't really fit and look goofy. Whereas on an S chassis or an RX-7, I mean, you could fit like a 295 tire. Now, I still think the Miata is great. I still love the Miata. It's an amazing chassis for drifting. The suspension's way better, but it, it will be interesting to see the weight difference between a much bigger, roomier car that you can fit a much bigger tire on and the LS Miata. Okay, so 27.29. So we only lost 20 pounds from before. Let's see, what's our front and rear again? 53.8 front, basically 54 front and 46 rear. Now imagine if we took 100 pounds off the nose, that would drop us down to 26.28, 26.30, we'll call it. Okay, so that's good to know. So I just wanted to double check that as a running driving car. I'm gonna get this thing out of here, get the Miata off the trailer, put it on the left. We got the LS Miata in here. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with this car, it's a 1997 Mazda Miata. It has a 5.3 aluminum block truck motor. It's an L33. So it's like the high output version, 10.1 to 1 compression, 799 heads. The first motor that was in it, broad knocked first event because I didn't have a good enough pan. So I put a basic two stage dry sump on it. So we've got the dry sump pump and the lines running back and the tank back here with the breather. Um, this is my finish panel on my tail lights. I'm installing a remote like pull cable for my battery cutoff, but I've, I've got all that inside the car. So it'll account for the weight, basically roughly in the same spot. Interior wise, it's got carpet, it's got a dash. We've got carpet back here even with the insulation and stuff. Got a block off plate. It's got a NASCAR bar cage. So the bars come out into the door. The doors are gutted except for this top portion um, and I have clip-in windows and something to keep in mind too before we weigh this is it's not just a V8 swap, it's not just an LS swap, we didn't just put another motor in. We put a V8 in it with a CD09 350Z transmission, a bigger stouter drive shaft and a Ford 8.8 .8 IRS differential. So it's an entire drivetrain swap. I'll show you underneath real quick. So you can see the Ford 88 back here, big, heavy differential, bigger, beefier axles. We've got dual caliper knuckles, which are big, beefy knuckles. We've got these big steel laser cut control arms, upper and lowers. Um, so it definitely has some, some added weight, not just the V8 itself, you know, more exhaust tubing, yada. Yada. So anyway, that's the rundown on the car. Uh, I'll put a picture here before of what it weighed. It weighed 2180. I don't remember the front to rear, but I have it saved. Dude, of course when I want to blow this thing up, it doesn't care and just keeps on going with terribly low compression. Okay. I said, I said uh, 2250 is what I hope it is. Just because that's what I hope it is. Well, look at it. Holy hell. 2162 is what this thing weighs right now. 53% front, which makes sense because you got all the turbo stuff. That's insane. Like a stock one's like 50-50. So this car has all the stuff behind the dash removed, like the HVAC box, the heater core, it's got the air conditioning itself removed, but it's still got all the factory wiring, it's got a turbo kit added to it, bigger front radiator, uh, all the stock brake stuff, a missing door uh, glass, like we said. 
but bucket seat, stock passenger seat, uh, steering wheel and airbag removed on both sides, roll bar, Treasure Coast like lightweight hardtop, the rears inside is pretty intact, it's got an, even a bigger battery than stock. That is wild, I did not think it would be that white, that makes me happy. So once the Miata is done with the LSOP running and driving, because this thing obviously has all, it's full fluid, it's almost out of gas, uh, not on purpose, just coincidentally. Uh, we'll come back, we'll do the same thing. We'll weigh it just like this and see what the weight difference is. So that is what it weighed before with trans, stock diff, stock control arms and knuckles. So really the big changes are the engine, the trans, the diff, the axles, the cage, and the control arms. All right, enough talking about it. Let's uh, drop it down and figure out what it weighs. Well, I've never weighed this car, so I am real anxious and curious to see what it's gonna weigh. I just got these scales like a week ago and I've been waiting. So I got this thing back in the shop to weigh it. All right, zero her out, bring it on down. I'm a little nervous, man. I'm really hoping this thing's light, but I feel like it's gonna be, I'm gonna guess 24, 25. Oh, oh my God. 25, 36. 25, 36, that's insane. What's the front to rear? 54 front, 46 rear. So I mean, that's not that bad, weight split wise, but 25, 36. So that means it would only be, if the RX-7 had an aluminum block, it would only be 100 pounds lighter than the RX-7. Granted, the RX-7 is more gutted, you know, this car at least has some interior, you know, complete dash, carpet, yada, yada. But still, man, Still, 2536. That is disappointing. I was thinking it was gonna be 24 and I was hoping for lower. That's crazy. You know, again, this car is pretty beefed up. You know, we've got this big cooling expansion tank, big heavy duty control arms and all that stuff. Big heavy polyurethane body kit. But still, 2536. That's insane, man. That is crazy. So we gained 350 pounds-ish from when it was 1.8 turbo. So we know the engine, well, we don't know exactly how much heavier the engine is. We know the block's 40 pounds there, 30 something pounds heavier. That's crazy. I mean, imagine if this thing had an iron block and it'd be another 100 pounds on the nose, it would be freaking 26, 26, 36, and probably like 56, 58% front. Uh, granted, the car's not cut out at all. Full factory core support, metal everywhere. A trunk, for example, you know, nothing's cut out back here all complete so I mean it's not like a super gutted stripped car we got a big heavy jack point and things like that but man wow that's crazy so what's what's really interesting about that too is this car is incredibly fast in drift with a 205 tire and a lot of people including myself attribute a lot of that to the weight you know oh it's a light car the smaller tire is more grip on the lighter car whereas in reality I mean this thing's probably I'd, I'd really like to get a, a gutted S chassis in here and weigh that and see, you know, what the weight difference is between a, a LS swapped gutted S chassis and this. Um, that would be really interesting. Uh, but anyway, you know, it, it, with 205s, it's still super fast, keeps up with those cars on 265. So, I mean, really it means it's, it's all in the suspension. These cars have double A-arm front and rear. It's really good suspension. They make a ton of rear grip no matter what tire you put on there. And the short wheelbase makes them really snappy and fast in transition. So. You know, when you're following somebody, you can transition super quick and be right back on their door. It's a very nimble car, but it doesn't have much of a weight advantage. Not at all. Oh, let's see the left to right. The left to right is almost dead even though. 680, 690, 580, or 578, 586. So it's pretty balanced. That's good. But anyway, enough jibber jabber about this car. I'm just surprised, man. I am really surprised. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's gonna be it. It's about all the stuff I can think of to weigh. If you guys have any ideas, any things you want to see me weigh and compare, now that we have some scales, let me know. Uh, I would like to do, like I said, a complete LS dropout, full accessories, wiring harness, whatever. You know, complete, complete. Same with the Miata motor and maybe other motors if we can find people that have some to throw on the scales, but, uh, yeah, for now, that's about all I can think of. So uh, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, otherwise, I hope to see you guys for the next one. But for now, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.
lost the power steering belt on that one. Yeah. I was like, where did my power steering go? It's gone. 